Who is Keemstar? Well, I'm Keemstar, and this is my story. Back in 2009, I was in my seventh or eighth year working at the attorney's office, um, and I started getting into Halo 3. I had my own Xbox, and I had a gamer tag called DJ Keemstar. And the reason why I came up with that gamer tag is because on the weekends, I would DJ weddings. So I worked at the attorney's office and on the weekends I would DJ weddings and events and I was making a killing and I was doing really good for myself. And I just found out that I was about to be a father. All this happened at the same time. One night I was out drinking with some friends and I came home and I was a little drunk. And the thing that I loved about Halo is the social aspect of the game. Right? right before the match would start, you would tell the other team, I'm going to own you, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'm going to kick your butt. And I became in love with the trash talk as much as I became in love with the actual game. In fact, more in love with the trash talk. But anyhow, one night I came home from the bar, like I said, a dr little drunk, and I started really reaming into the other team. I didn't think much of it. And then the next day I got online and I got a couple messages and then the next day more messages. And finally, a week later, I realized that there was some video of me up on YouTube somewhere. Now, I never inspired to be a YouTuber or a gaming entertainer. It just happened. This guy called Dranker recorded me and put me online. When I saw the video, it had 20,000 views and I was shocked. I was a little embarrassed about some of the trash talk that I was saying, but it was funny. It was comedic. Um, at least some people thought it was, you know, comedy is a weird thing. Not everyone thinks things are funny, but 20,000 people did. And I got contacted by the guy that uploaded the video. His name was Duranker. And he told me that, you know, a group of people just got together and they created this thing called FAG, not fag, FAG, the Federation of Asshole Gamers. And they asked me if I wanted to be a part of it. And I was like, uh, I don't know. He explained to me that, you know, they got together and they would make videos on Halo 3. You know, they'd capture trash talk and they'd pull pranks and do all kinds of different stuff, like get people to betray you and then boot them out and just, you know, funny little pranks. I said, what the hell? Why not? So I started making videos with them. And I decided at some point that I wanted to make my own channel. So I made my own channel and fast, 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 like super fast, I got up to 3,000 subscribers. Now, at that time, I didn't know how to run a ca uh, capture card. I didn't know how to edit a video. I didn't know how to do any of this stuff. In fact, how I made all my videos was I had a guy in the lobby with me that would always record me. I called him my cameraman, and he would make the videos for me and then upload them to my channel. He had the password. The thing took off. At 3,000 subscribers, I got a message from Machinima, and they invited me to be a director on their channel. I didn't know what that was. Started looking into it and I was like super, super happy. So I put together a video and I sent it to him. But again, I was about to be a parent. My child was about to be born. And I remember I woke up one morning and one afternoon and Melissa spent the night in the hospital because there were some complications or whatever. And I had to go home to take care of some work Again, I was still working at the attorney's office. I went home, hurried up, had like a cat nap. I woke up like in the afternoon and CNN was on the background and I saw that Michael Jackson just passed away. At that time, they said, you know, he's on the way to the hospital. They believe he passed away. It's pretty scary. I was like, wow, the king of pop dead? And then I walked over to my computer and I went to my channel and my channel had 300 new subscribers. Now, that might not seem a lot like in today's day and age, but back in 2009, that was huge. I'm like, what's going on? And then I realized my first video went up on Machinima. And then the phone rang. I answered the phone. It was Melissa. She said, I'm having the baby now. So I rushed down to the hospital. and I became a father. And all this happened in one day. And then from there, we started getting a lot of comments on our videos. I started getting comments that, you know, these trolls were fake and all this stuff was set up and staged. We were the first of its kind, you know, before there were trolling videos all over YouTube, there was FAG. We kind of started the trend. There were a few trolling videos prior to, uh, to us back in 2009 and late 2008, 
but uh, nothing organized, no group, no actual channel dedicated to this type of content. We were trendsetters. But we started getting all these comments, like I was saying, that it was staged, it was fake, uh, it was fake, it wasn't real. So I wanted to prove to everyone that we were actually doing this, so I started streaming on Justin TV at the time. And uh, then we went to Ustream, and then finally I found my home on Blog TV. And I had a very successful stream back in 2010. There was like 3,000 people watching me every single night live. Um, and I was making so much money and I was doing so well for myself because even then gaming channels couldn't get partnered, but my gaming channel with FAG Halo a-holes got partnered and it was the fifth gaming channel to ever get partnered. So that was a huge deal. So we started making money from that. I was making money from my stream and I became the number one most subscribed person beating like Shea Carl and, and Philip DeFranco and all these guys on blog TV, which was huge. I made enough money where I was able to quit my job at the attorney's office and pursue whatever this was, gaming entertainment. At the course of that summer in 2010, um, the Xbox Live enforcement team really started cracking down on me and they started banning my consoles over and over and over again to the point where I couldn't uh, make trolling videos anymore. I just couldn't. Like every time I would stream, they would just ban my Xbox. So I started going over to another website called Battlecam and Battlecam was like a live streaming uh, website where you would talk trash to each other and battle it out and See who can stay on the longest. And I became friends with the owner of the website, which is Elkie David, who was uh, a billionaire. And at the same time this was going on, um, I stumbled across, I was dabbling into Minecraft. I had a Minecraft server, um, you know, back late 2010, early 2011. And, you know, that was doing very successful. So everything was going good, but I was kind of leaning away from trolling you know, FAG ran its course for those two years. And somebody sent me a video and they said, look, Minecraft is coming to Xbox Live. But it wasn't Minecraft. It was actually a small developer that was creating a game called Fortress Craft. And I knew with the popularity that I had at the time that I could make this game huge. I could make sure that Katuku and Machinima and all these big gaming companies journalist, if you will, would write stories about this if I could just spread the word. So I contacted the indie developer, made a deal with him, took ownership, uh, part ownership over Fortress Craft, and I started promoting it. And Fortress Craft became this big thing and sold 2 million copies on Xbox Live. So then I was set. I was set. But the way Microsoft pays is they only pay quarterly. And the Xbox Live enforcement team was really crushing down on me to the point where I couldn't make revenue anymore. I couldn't stream gameplay because they were banning my Xbox. I couldn't do uh, make videos because they were banning my Xbox and my gamer tags. So I was to the point where everything started really slowing down and I had no income. The only thing I was doing every day is like going on battle cam. So... I was waiting for this big check. I mean, a really big check. Life-changing money. But I had to wait for Microsoft to pay us. So all throughout 2011, I was just making it by. Now, you got to understand that I'm a family. Or I have a family. That I have a child. Um, I have a girlfriend. You know, everyone needs to eat. Everyone needs to have gas, electric, shelter. Everything needs to be taken care of. And I'm the man. And I have to provide for my family. So I was contacting the attorney's office and I was about ready to go back to work. All right. Because I was so hard up when an opportunity came knocking at my door, a gentleman contacted me and said that he owned a YouTube network and he wanted me to have half of the YouTube network and all I had to do was promote it. Now you got to understand, I just came out of like promoting Fortress Craft and it being very successful. And I had big money that was going to be paid out to me soon. So, this was another thing that I knew I could do. I knew I could promote. I, I was very successful in marketing that game. 
there was, it would be really easy for me to promote a network. So this guy went as far as said, we can even call it the Keemstar network. I was super excited. He told me that he was worried that if we just partner everyone, all right, that someone would like, you know, upload offensive content like, you know, pornography or something like that and get the whole network shut down. It was like a standard MCN. Again, I knew nothing about networks. You got to understand like eight months ago, like we were the fifth like gaming channel to ever get partnered. Uh, Machinima just started partnering gaming channels. This is way before gaming channels could even get partnered. There weren't really like networks. Um, there was Machinima, there was like Maker, there was the Game Station, and, and that was it. There was a few of the, the collective maybe, there was a few other things out there, but this partnering on YouTube thing was brand new. I didn't really know how it all worked, but this guy that contacted me did, apparently. And he told me that we needed to take a $50 security deposit from each person before we partner them so we have insurance that they wouldn't get the network shut down. So I'll, I started promoting it. I was super excited, super happy. Started promoting, promoting the Keemstar network. Uh, I even uploaded a video on Halo A-Holes saying, hey, look, we'll partner anyone. We just need to take a $50 deposit. Um, this is an opportunity for anyone to get partnered and to make money on YouTube. Now at that time, you gotta understand that you couldn't even have a YouTube banner unless you were partnered. Like only people that were partnered had a YouTube banner. So this was a big deal. Like close to like 50 people jumped on it right away. At that time, my channel was partnered with the Game Station, which is Maker, which recently got purchased by Disney. And the CEO of Maker sent me an email and he said, we're unpartnering Halo A-Holes right now. We're, 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 we're getting away from your channel. What you just did with that video, um, with the $50 deposit, that's clearly against YouTube rules. And I started freaking out. I had no idea what I just got myself into. So I hurried up and deleted the video. And then I went to the guy that was running the PayPal, the guy that contacted me, the guy that actually had the network, and I told him what was said to me by Maker. And he said, ah, oh, no, we can do that, it's fine, I checked it and everything. But I didn't know what was going on. And I said, well, can we refund everyone? Can we at least refund everyone? Because it wasn't my PayPal, it was his. And he said, no, it's fine, we don't have to do that, we don't have to do that. The next morning I woke up and my channel was terminated. The channel that I worked for like this whole time with, with my friends, Robert, uh, Robot, uh, Two Bucks, and Drinker was just gone. YouTube found out and they shut me down. I'm like, what did I do? What did I get involved in? So naturally I wanted to refund everyone. The guy that contacted me said, uh, yeah, we're not gonna refund ever anyone and I'm gonna get the channel back and I'm gonna get the, the network back up. But at this point, there were so many people. I mean, the CEO of Maker was telling me that we were in the wrong. There were so many people that I just didn't believe this guy anymore. And then I found out that this guy purchased this MCN, this network, off of hack forms. That it wasn't even his to begin with. I didn't make any money from this. In fact, I had to borrow money from my parents at, at the time because of this. And none of those people got refunded because I didn't control the PayPal. It was his PayPal. And it was just horrible. Absolutely horrible. And long story short, I just had to keep moving on. The money from Fortress Craft finally came in. Um, I was wealthy. And, you know, I purchased a house in cash and I purchased a brand new car in cash and I purchased everything that my family ever needed, a hot tub, a Segway. I, I, I was happy, but I had this cloud over me this whole time of what happened with that network thing and getting that channel down. That mistake that I made, that, that ignorance that has cost me all of, all of my work up to that point. So I contact a lot of people at YouTube. I try to get it back. I, I had no luck. I talked to people that interned at YouTube. I 
had a pretty much a team built of trying to fix this problem that I had. Nothing worked. I tried throwing money at it. I tried to get an attorney involved. Nothing worked. There was no way I could get out of this horrible thing that I've done. And I just said, I got to rebuild. I got to just continue doing what I've done this whole time. And that's make people laugh. That's make, you know, people feel entertained. You know, I would get emails from kids that would be like, I want to kill myself. My life was so bad. My parents abused me. I get bullied at school, but every day I would come home and watch your trolling videos and laugh. And it's the one thing that left up my spirits. And it's, it's emails like that. And it, it's the love and stuff that I got from, from making people laugh that made me say, no matter what, I'm not quitting. You know, I was already set. Like I didn't need money anymore. It wasn't like I was working for money. Um, and I wasn't working for money before. I actually just loved doing this. I loved entertaining people. So I wanted to get back into it. At that time, I started talking to Elkie David, which is the owner of um, uh, Battlecam, the billionaire. And I was trying to put together a TV show. And the TV show would be big YouTubers competing in Call of Duty. And, you know, the grand prize would be like 10 grand or whatever. And, you know, eventually we'd set it up where it would be like pay-per-view or something like that. We ended up calling it Billionaire's Challenge. And uh, I got White Boy 7th Street. I got Woody's Gamer Tag, X Jaws, um, Only Use Me Blade, Wings of Redemption, and Freddy W. Um, all together to compete for a $10,000 prize. And it took off. It was the first Call of Duty event to get 100,000 concurrent viewers. It was huge. And people loved it. So this was my new thing. This is, this is the thing that I was doing now. You know, I was creating TV shows. Like, it, it was awesome. And I was entertaining people again. And it was, it was, it was amazing. But then there was controversies when we tried to do it the second time. We we tried to involve more YouTubers and Elky David tried to pull some prank or whatever where he said, hey, we're going to have an assisted suicide on the stream. And the the community really attacked that. And they, they, they really were turned off by Billionaire's Challenge. And we ended up having a second one and it was a pretty good success. In fact, Nade Shot, um, you know, I think that was like his first... Uh, big break to quit McDonald's. He won five thousand dollars in it, and it and it was like online. I had Holiday Doc there. We tried to set up a third one, but at that time, Billionaire's Challenge was just done. It, it was over with. But from doing Billionaire's Challenge, I had a new friend. Like I, I had a guy that I really liked a lot, and I became friends with him. And his name was Only Use Me Blade, and he lived in Seattle. So I contacted him, and I just wanted to do something different than trolling. I, I know I was like really good and I, and I know I'm still good and I can pull off amazing pranks. Um, but I wanted to just talk like I'm talking to you right now. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted to have a podcast. And as I'm looking through these YouTubers and I'm trying to find the perfect person, I stumble on my friend that I'm already friends with his, his Sunday chill commentaries. And I was like, this is the guy that I need to be the host of my podcast. So I put a lot of pressure on him and he kept saying, nah, I don't know. No, no. And then finally one day I said, listen, I'll do all the work. We'll split everything 50, 50, any profits that come from this thing, but I'll do all the work. All right. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is show up. That's the deal. I made him and, uh, I, only use me blade. Wouldn't care if I said this about him, but he's a little bit lazy, right? <laughs> you know? So he would, that's, that's what got him. He was like, yes, let's do it. So we started doing this audio podcast and we had, you know, guests come in and it was a hit. It was a hit. And I decided I had this weird thing where I wanted to make a music video for some reason. So what I did is, uh, I went to school with this guy, Scott Ken Martin, and he's a YouTuber and he's friends with all these big YouTubers, like good friends with like Charles Trippy and the Shaytards and like all these giant like vlogger YouTubers. He's like good friends with them. And I went to high school with this kid and he's really, he went to school for like 
taking photos and stuff, video photography. <laughs> I'm murdering that word, but you know what I mean. All right. So I contact him and he's in Florida at the time. And again, I have this fortress crap money. I'm like, look, I'm going to fly you up here to shoot this music video. It's just going to be fun. I don't care how much money I waste on this. It's just going to be something fun that we do. And I contact Blade. I'm like, I'm flying you up as well. So I fly up Blade and I fly up uh, Scott K. Martin and we create this music video. But while, we th while we're there, I had season tickets to the Bills game and I decided let's do a podcast like at the Bills game, but let's actually film it. And we got the footage, we edited it, and we uploaded it to YouTube. And we're down in my basement theater, and we're sitting in these big leather couches or chairs or whatever that recline and everything. And I got a nice 50 inch TV downstairs in the basement. And we're sitting there and we're watching this, and something clicks like this is much bigger than we ever thought, you know? Not only did me and Blade have an amazing conversation, not only were we in the front of this stadium where people are tailgating all around us and we have professional mics on and cameras, but we have Scott Ken Martin, who's a professional editor, who like turned this thing into a TV show. And we're watching this, and it's magic before our eyes. Blade comes up with the idea. He's like, what if I move to Buffalo? What if we just do this? What if we do this TV show thing? So we did it. I went to PAX West. We hung out with like Syndicate and um, like Foys and a couple other people. And um, while we were there in Seattle, uh, we packed up Blade. We rented a U-Haul and we moved Blade all the way across the country. Me, Blade, and Scott and Martin. And we came here and we started making this high production podcast known as the Bad Kid Cast. And somebody, for some reason, the channel just disappeared. And um, Happy Happy Grief Day or something like that just disappeared. Um, I had a channel with videos of my family, uh, of Mia, and it just disappeared. All my channels just disappeared. And we couldn't figure out why. And this guy contacted us and he said that he was taking us down. If you have a YouTube channel that gets suspended or shut down, you can't have another one. And this person was contacting YouTube saying, hey, look, Keemstar has another channel. He has this bad kid cast. He has this other thing going on. So we're like, oh, no, what do we do? We made another channel. We talked to the guy. We pleaded with him. We begged him, just please leave us alone. We made another channel. That got taken down. In the middle of this, I was doing this thing on Twitter, which was like a troll. I was basically like, when people were fighting, I was shoutcasting it on Twitter. I'd be like, so-and-so is fighting with so-and-so, hashtag drama alert. And I decided to like turn it into videos and make videos of it. And it was retardedly successful. It was like, it was amazing. Like I created this channel, Drama Alert Nation, and it got a million views in the first month and 30,000 subscribers. But it just got shut down. So I made another channel and it got 10,000 subscribers in the first like two days and that one got shut down. So all this stuff was happening where I was really excited about and passionate about, but it just kept getting shut down. So I got together another team and we really, really tried to get in contact with YouTube, which is impossible. And we tried to get Halo A-Holes back because I knew all my channels were going to be taken down if I did not get Halo A-Holes back. And finally, we got through to YouTube. Now, this is 18 months later. My YouTube channel, Halo A-Holes, that got shut down for apparently selling partnerships, which was not the case. It was uh, supposed to be a, you know, a reserve or whatever. But that channel came back. YouTube freed up the channel. And I was cleared on YouTube. And this is early 2013. And I remember I kind of held a party at PAX uh, East in Boston. Like, you know, we rented... Uh, a mansion and you know we had like uh the phase guys phase temper x jaws and a few other people uh there 
And I remember like a bunch of these bigger YouTubers like telling me like how FAG like inspired them. I remember like FaZe Tommy said that he used to do graphics for them before he blew up. And now FaZe is like the biggest clan in all of YouTube. I mean, um, and he used to do graphics for me. I didn't even know that. So these other YouTubers inspired me to get back into my roots and to do trolling and Halo A-Holes just came back. So I was freed on YouTube. So I launched Killer Keemstar. And on that channel in 2013, I pulled off some of the greatest pranks ever. I mean, I really showed this new generation of, of trolls like what it's like to, to pull off a good prank, a legit troll. And uh, we had the fake nuke uh, series. We, we had a bunch of stuff up there, and it was amazing. And it really took off. At the same time, uh, I launched the Drum Alert, um, which was like the fifth Drum Alert channel, and that thing started taking off. We launched a new Bad Kid cast, and we got all this studio equipment, and we had a camera on us, and the Bad Kid cast, the third Bad Kid cast channel was taken off, and the new Drum Alert channel was taken off, and my personal channel was taken off, and everything was amazing. At this time, I created another game called Amputee through uh, my gaming company, and the game was successful. PewDiePie played my game. Yogg's class, uh, Yogg's cast played my game. All these people played my game. Like so, and then it got on Steam, and like I had all this great stuff going for me again. And then all my channels got shut down. Halo A holes got reshut down. Drama Alert got reshut down. The Bad Kid cast got reshut down. My personal channel got reshut down. I even had like a clan channel, uh, the Thrust Clan, and we competed at an MLG event, and that got shut down as well. This mistake that I made, you know, with you know taking the reserve for partnerships or whatever, um, has haunted me. I don't know why YouTube cleared me on YouTube and then took it back, but this thing has been haunting me forever. But I just can't give up. Like I've already been infected with you. Like I've already been infected with entertaining people and you know people enjoying what I, what I produce and what I make. I've already been infected. Like it doesn't matter who says I can't and I'm not allowed to be here. Like I'm just going to make another channel. Like I'm just like I know I fucked up. And I believe that I've, I've paid, I've lost years of work. Um, everything I've ever created is gone. And I, I feel like I'm being punished for, for that, but to just walk away and stop making videos, I can't. Now we're in a situation where drama alert's been shut down like so many times, but I just keep creating new channels. In fact, I've hit a hundred thousand subscribers three different times this year. That's that's right. You heard me right. Three channels that have reached 100,000 channels and then been shut down. 100,000 subscribers and then been shut down. And, you know, that's that's proven fact that people want the content that I'm producing and, and that they love, enjoy it. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to get hit 100,000 subs three times this year. Um, and the situation is now is I don't even log into the YouTube channel. Like, I don't own the YouTube channel. There's a loophole in the system um, where it says that I can't log into a, a, a channel and I can't own a channel and I can't even profit from a channel, which I don't do any of that stuff. Um, I have other people run the channel for me and I'm a contracted worker. Um, and, and that's how I'm able to be on YouTube, but still people are finding a way to shut me down and shut down my channels. But there's so much, um, stuff that's said about me because of the the character that I've played and there's so much misconceptions of me um but I wanted you to hear it from me first that my main objective is just to entertain people that's what I care about more than anything I care about reading comments of people saying that they really enjoyed you know what I've done and and tweets that people that love my stuff like that's that's my drug and I'm never going to rehab. 
That's my story. Thanks.